I'm back on the ironing board today um, with my nice white towels on the top. I've had my wrapping cloth out that I started before Christmas. I put it away safely over Christmas, but now we're back to normal, sort of. I've got it out again, and I only need one more piece to finish it. So this is 12 by 12. I've measured the space on the cloth, and the design area needs to be 11 by 11, so, or 10 by 10, I can't remember. I'm going to have to measure it again, I don't know. But anyway, this is my 12 by 12 muslin, so all I know is I need to create something, put something together on here. So I thought I'd do that today on camera, but before I do that, I wanted to talk to you about this. I bought this fabric quite a while ago now. I got it off the internet and I bought it because it just said white whatever fabric. But when it came, it's got like plasticky, I don't know, like a synthetic the design, which is pretty. It's a delicate flower. It's superimposed on here with some kind of chemical and it's just not me. And I'm, I mean, I cut a piece off and used it once and I couldn't. I had to throw it away what I made because I can't work with stuff like this. It's some kind of block in my head just won't allow me to use stuff like this. But I know that somebody could make gorgeous stuff with this and it seems such a shame because it's just in my box of fabrics and I know I'll never use it because we all work in different ways with different fibres. There's nothing wrong with this as such. It's just it's not me. But it may well be you and it may well be something you could use. And there's probably about, um, I don't know, maybe a metre with just a square cut off. And I can't even press it because I don't want this stuff on my iron because I use my iron for my vintage lace and stuff. So that's another consideration for me. I don't want a, the chance of getting any of this synthetic stuff on my iron. But I'm not totally disrespecting it. I mean, it's beautiful. I just know I'm never going to use it in my work. So somebody can have this. So in order for me to decide who can have it, if you leave a comment today, I won't mention this on the blog. Um, I'll just mention it in the video because I know not everybody watches the videos. Some people just come, look at the pictures, read what I write and go. Do I have time for the videos? Whatever. That isn't a problem. But I won't mention it on the blog. But if you want me to put your name in a hat for this, um, for a draw, you get the whole lot, just one person. Then if you leave a comment, just leave the letter F at the end, a capital F. And then I'll know that you're interested in having this fabric. And then I'll draw that later in the week. Um, maybe I'll give it a week because it's just such a waste sitting in my box and I'm never going to use it okay so I'll put that away for now that's that out of the way so just leave as I say a capital letter F at the end of your comment and that'll confuse everyone else who doesn't know what it's about could be quite funny actually right so I just want to put this block together and I'm conscious of keeping it true to the fabrics I've used already so I've gathered a few things here that have already been used in my cloth. I don't want to, I got new fabrics when I went to London, etc., didn't I? But I don't want to use them because I haven't used them in this particular cloth. And I want it to all be cohesive, you know, I want it all to run seamlessly with the same cloth. So I use a little bit of this. This is printed quilting cotton that's bought. There's all, something's happened to my scissors as well, it's really annoying. I think people use them. They're not, they know they're not allowed. There's only three of us living in this house, we're all adults. And I've begged them not to use them, but I'm sure they have because they're hacking, they're not even cutting. I think I'm going to have to buy new scissors. So that's the first piece, I'll put that down there because I know I've got some of that in my other cloth. And I want some lace in here because I'm going to continue that because there's lace in the other cloth. So I'm wondering about using this handkerchief, a corner of this handkerchief, to get lace in here. I don't want to lose a corner or anything, so I'll put something else down first. And I've got this, this is shop bought Brodery on Glaze. I have used this before as well. This has been so used, you know, I bought this, I bought loads of this to make a an Austrian, not an Austrian blind, um, what was it? One of them pleated blind, a Roman blind from my bedroom. But I've never made it because I don't know how and I can't. And I keep hoping a relative will come along and say, oh, I'll do it for you, Karen, but they haven't yet. I know who they are. They made them for their own house. Um, but she's never said, so I'll just have to buy a ready-made Roman blind. So that's that bit ready to go in. So if I put that along the bottom there, then I can maybe get that handkerchief superimposed on there somewhere. So that's two pieces together now. I've still got this area here and I've also got over here. Um, so I think, how would that look? So I've still got a gap there. 
I don't want a gap there that you can see through the handkerchief. So I think I'll put a little bit of this down here. Got fibres on this. There's actually a few rust marks on this because it's vintage. But I'm not going to stress about that because I can stitch over them. So perhaps if I put that there and turn that edge over to neaten it, it will come together. There's method in my madness. So if I put that there, okay, and cut it off there, right, and then that actually smells really nice when I end it. It must have been laundered in something with a nice smell. And then that will go over there, but I don't want to lose this lace, so I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to cut this lace off because I don't want to waste any lace at all. So if I just trim those off, and on the back of here I've got labels, I need to take them off as well, the original labels. So I'll put that lace to one side and I'll use that again. I'll just take these labels off the back. They say Nottingham lace, all cotton, made in the UK. Unfortunately the paper labels, not cloth ones, or I would have left them on. Right, so that goes there. So then we've got a bit of an overlay going on here, so these can be left loose. That would be quite a nice kind of like fringy thing and then I've got a big space down here so what I'm going to do because I don't need anything overly fancy down there because there's a lot of lace going on down there I could put this on there a strip of this and there that's the block finished when this is cut off so I just need to pin this together now and we're good to go with the embellishment and my piece that I've been working on that you've been seeing for ages I was a bit conscious last night that I'm going to be boring you with that soon so I have done more work on it but I'll wait till I've progressed it a bit further before I put it back on my blog so cut up there I've got just a plain strip there that won't detract from that lovely lace edge and then I just need to pin them now and that's that block put together so that was very quick, I mean we're on 7 minutes, that's not bad so this is going to be lovely when it's embellished and embroidered so I'll turn off now, but don't forget if you're interested in that fabric that I don't want to keep hold of then just leave the F at the end of your comment, okay